or we're looking for a zone breakdown there. All right, target would be 49, 18 and three quarters. 49, 18 and three quarters. You can see we got out of the imbalanced market yesterday and look what can happen. We went from a balanced market. A balanced market is when you're in between HV and LVA. So we are in an imbalanced market right now. Hey, thanks, Cheryl. We're in an imbalanced market right now. So a balanced market just means, guys, for the last 39 years on market profile, if you're in between a high value and low value, you are a balanced market. The market's balanced in between low value area here and high value here. So let's take a look at price action as it's moving here. Let's watch the S&P here this morning. So right now we're looking for two setups. We're looking for a retracement short on an outer edge closing outside the outer zone. If it's going to be a shallow retracement, it's going to reverse here and get a weaker market by getting below negative 100. So we'll see if that happens. But our breakdown, our zone break is going to happen here at 33 and 3 quarters. So those are two setups that we're looking for. Let's try and do a shallow retracement now. See if it gets into a weaker stance in the market. Our targets made yesterday's profile high value area. Yes. Gerald, you're good to go. So what happened yesterday, and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. It's going to, uh, we're going to look for today. Is yesterday, we're in between low value, which is, let me get a big arrow. If you understand this, you're going to understand where all the market participants are in the market and how we can find targets for the day on these zone breakdowns or these outer edge retracements. So if you're in between low value and high value, the market is balanced. Once it broke out yesterday above high value, the market becomes imbalanced. What that means is you have all these resting sell orders at this level and these buy stops start hitting, and the market likes to, what, take off in that direction. So what we did yesterday is I put targets up for you. I said if we break out, we're going to have targets. And it hit my targets yesterday. I took them off, but it hit my targets, hit right to the control point in the high-value area. Today, the market with the news came out. We are now in an imbalance market again. The balance market was in between profile here all morning. High value area was a high. Low value area was a low. It was a balance market, but now we're into a what? An imbalance market. So where's the market trying to gravitate towards? It has no underlying support because what you do is you look at previous market profiles. So if I have no underlying support, this market is going to try to gravitate towards my previous market profile, 49.18 a quarter, and that's where she's trying to get to. It's going to try to gravitate towards this magnet of 49.18 and three quarters. But what they like to try to bring it to for the day session, they're going to try to bring it to the control point, like I talked about yesterday morning. They're going to try to bring it up to the control point. And they sure did. They broke it out and brought it right to it. So my ultimate target for today, if we stay below low value area, is not just the HVA, 18 and a half. I got us going down to 86 from 35. So we got a we we got a big 50 point potential. 
in the market on the on the S&P today. So what we want to look for then, we're in an imbalanced market right now. Like yesterday, like I said, it was in a balanced. And I was saying we were in a balanced. If we get outside and we get in an imbalanced market, the market could go vertical. This is where you want to participate in the market, these vertical moves. That's where you want to look for these zone breakouts and breakdowns. So right here this morning on this low, we're looking for a zone breakdown right now as we speak. We're looking for a zone break. If not, we're looking for an outer edge retracement up here in the outer edge zone. And that's what we look for. We look for two types of setups during the day. We look for these outer deep retracements. These slingshots, typically they're the first wave. So that's what we'll look for that. At this level, the market would have to close outside by at least one candle and then come right back inside. And I'll show you that on the strategy that you guys are going to be getting in a second. That's what this conference call we're going to be doing also. I want to go over live action this morning with you, though, because we had news coming out. So we're going to look for that. It bounced off the zone breakdown right now, or we're going to look for a zone breakdown here. Keep it simple. Those are the two setups. So we got the outer zone retracement, slingshot, and then we got our zone break at this level here. So when you're doing these then, so this is the S&P this morning, <coughs> excuse me. It's forming a cup and handle here. There's your cup. Forming a cup and handle formation for a short. So what we'll need, we'll need to break through this we'll need to break through this low to solidify the cup and handle. There's your cup and handle formation. We'll need to break through these dots. A yellow bar will form. That's our trigger bar. And then our target is going to be market profile. So we are into an imbalanced market. So yesterday, like I said, as we're waiting for a trade, let's look at yesterday's price action so we can see today's price action, how we can emulate that. Yesterday was an awesome day. February 1st had some nice trade setups, great breakout trades. Followed through nicely at market profile, nice retracement trades. So yesterday we were in beside being between a high value and low value area. Remember, this has been working since 1985. This is not a new indicator. This is where all the trading participants, it's a roadmap. It leaves their footprint. So we, we know with all the trading participants that yesterday we were in a balanced market. I was talking about on the microphone. If we break out, it hit its head, rejected, then it broke out, and we had zone breakouts, zone breakouts, and the market exploded. It came into an imbalanced market. That was yesterday. It went vertical on us, right? Well, today, we came into the news in between profile. HBA was a high so far here. Low value here into a balanced market. But once news came out, we're now into an imbalanced market. So where do you find your target? On this short. The short target are previous market profiles. So what you want to do to find targets is look at your chart that you have or your software and look at my market profile levels. They are natural targets for the day. The market likes to go from control point to control point. So our overall natural target will be if we get pulled in on a slingshot or if we get pulled in on a zone break, 
is going to be down at 86 and three quarters. That's our daily target for the day. Our first target is going to be 18 and a quarter. So we're sitting up at 49.44. We got a lot of downside pressure. As long as we stay in an imbalanced market, as long as we stay in an imbalanced market, we're looking for 18 and a half and then 86 and then 74 and a half. Now, I was talking about this yesterday. How can we trade off the control point then? If you ever break below low value area and you actually retest the control point, that's the most volume traded, and I get an outer edge slingshot, those are, those are high probability reversal trades. So this market likes to come up and just hit the control at 54, and we get an outer zone where it closes a couple candles outside and closes back inside. We have an outer edge setup. Then we are looking for a reversal. Okay. So let's go as we look for that. I don't want to cover up price action because I want to watch this setup come up. Let's take a look at the software that we're going to be getting for all members so you can understand how to trade these outer zone trades. So let me cover this up. I want to keep price action up on the S&P. Um, let me go over a whole day session for you. I can go all the way over here because we know what to look for. Let me go over an entire trading session on outer zones on the S&P. So this is, this is the 31st, the entire trading day on the 31st. So the idea is when we get these outer zones, that's what we're looking for right now, the market gets stretched to a point where it's a high probability reversal. Now we tested these zones for 30 years and these are these are high probability zones of, of, of reversal zones. So you can adjust these zones per market. Everybody knows I love the my 54 zone. Um, so you can adjust them how you want to adjust them. Uh, this is a 51, 50, 51 to 54 zone that I'm looking for for a reversal on the S&P. So right now it's into it also reversal on the S&P as we speak. So what we'll do is we will look for a reversal at this level now on an outer zone trade. So what will happen is, is and I'll, I'll pull this up over here live for you. You'll get a yellow. So when the reversal happens, and I'll pull it up here in a second for you. So you can watch live action on this strategy and this together. You'll get a yellow bar reversal trigger bar. So not only we get trigger bars for breakdowns, you're going to get trigger bars that turn yellow for qualified reversals. So this won't turn yellow until we get a close back inside of the zone. So any reversal that we have, it's got to close back inside the zone. And it doesn't matter what Renko size you use, it's got to close outside the zone. And then it's got to close back inside the zone. Okay, so I'm going to put this up so we can watch it here. So as we move outside the zone, right, we're in an imbalanced market. So the software is going to turn yellow in a second if it closes back inside on this Renko. So you can see we have an outer zone trade on this Renko size. I believe this is a larger Renko size. It must be. Yeah, this is 125.25. So if I had it on 120, it would have turned yellow right now. This is 125.25. But you can see the outer zone trade. So let me put the 20 up. Let me match apples to apples. So you can see what the software will do when you have an outer edge trade. There's a short at 43 and three quarters. It's been as low as what, 41 and three quarters. Uh, your targets can, is a user, that's up to the user on the targets. But that's how the outer zone is going to work. Um, when it gets out to the outer zone, it's going to wait until you close back inside of this level. 
Now, for targets, let's say that you're short here on the strategy or on the indicator. You can use market profile here, guys. You can use market profile as your target. So the target on market profile is still 49.18.5 on a runner. So you can see how we, how we try to stalk trades. Now you can take break even trades. So 43 and 3 quarters was the entry. The low has been 41 a quarter. It's been 8 ticks so far on that entry. If you want to go 8 ticks or 2 points and go break even, you could do that. So you could just change your targets and go break even and see if the runner can run. I would put four in for my first. Let's do that here. So if you wanted to do that, I have 12 ticks as a first target on this anyway. But if you want to put four on the runner, you know, what you can do is you can, I don't want to cover price action, but you can, um, you can put it out to four ticks and then a runner if you want, or 12 ticks for a runner, or what have you. Whatever you would like to do, obviously does a good sell. And you can see how I stalked that trade before it even came up. At that level. So if you had 12 ticks, which I had in there, I had 12 and 1,000 ticks for two contracts. Where was it? 12 and 1,000. Let me turn the software on here. So you see, you have your 12 ticks. Now your break even plus one. Or if you don't want to break even, keep your stop in. But your overall target on this trade is 49.18 a quarter from 43 and a quarter short. <clears throat> but you see how I lined that up, guys. I wanted to run live price action today after news with the strategy and market profile to show you how you can stalk these trades before they come up. This is live price action we did this morning. You can see what I did is, is I looked at the market when the news came out. And I've only got two setups, right? I said we're going to look for a zone break or an outer edge slingshot. And that's the only really two setups you need to do. What I found is that with my setups, the first wave slingshot typically works the best if it's on the outer edge. And even the second and third waves if it's on the outer edge. Consequently, these cup and handle breakdowns, if the market was too weak to get to this outer edge, then what you can do is you can just sell this zone breakdown. But my point is, I want to get across to you guys this morning. The whole point is that use market profile as your tool to assist you in these setups. If I look at my target, I got my target out to 1,000 ticks on this last runner. If I get down to 49.18 from 43 and a quarter entry, that's going to be a good level either to scale contracts or to keep my stop tight. So the software, like I said, that traders... Uh, this is a 120-20 chart here. You can see I only had two setups. I was stalking. You can replay the video. Price action was in at this level. And I said there's only two setups we're looking for this morning. Price action was right there. Actually, sorry, price action was over here. I said we're looking for a deep zone retracement. So this is what's neat about the software. The market was at 39 a quarter. I'm looking for a short above 48. Almost 10 S&P points higher. And where does it gravitate towards? 
right to my outer zone, pulls in, strategy goes short, indicator says short, yellow bar forms, yellow candle showing that's a trigger for a possible reversal, and then we get rolling. If price action was too weak, which I pointed out Wednesday, we had a huge short Wednesday, and I said LVA was at this level, right where my zone break is. I said if we break down, we have about 18 points of potential. Sure enough, it broke down. The market went down 18 points. Why? Because the market profiles my targets. I'm not guessing where my targets are. I'm using all the market participants in the market to find the magnets where these markets can go. And this is the magnet. The magnet is 18 and a half for the day. But I also can use my software to understand where my two setups are. And the software says the outer zone sling is where it was, either there, and if, if the market's too weak for an outer zone sling, then we wait for a zone breakdown and we try to achieve our target of 18 and a half. Ultimate target is a control point is 86 and a quarter. There's no support in the market right here. There's nothing but air below us. So this market can easily roll down to 18 and a half. So you can adjust your runners accordingly to the target of 18 and a half. So as you're working through these different markets that you want to trade, that's how you want to do it. And that's why I wanted to come in today, put the strategy next to the indicator, and let's stalk a trade that comes up before it happens. Because you're either going to get an outer zone slingshot or you're going to get a zone breakdown. That's the only two possibilities that you have in the market, on any given market. Either this market's going to be weak and continue and break a zone, or it's going to retrace in a deep retracement and give a continuation. Then let's put it all together and use the roadmap over here and find out where the targets are. Where's the air in the market? Well, I got it's going down to 18 a quarter. It still has a long way to go. It's still 36 and a half. The short was up here at 43 and a quarter. It's all almost up, what, 43? So we're up six and some change right now. We're coming down to another possible entry of the zone break. So I want to keep this video running, Gerald, because I want to show them what a zone break is that's coming up. I want to show how it turns yellow there also. But I want to show you, instead of showing that, I want to show you how you can stop these trades by using the software. Not only do we have the roadmap that has been working since the last 39 years market profile that shows you that the market got yesterday, it was balanced, and I went over this yesterday, and I said if we get outside of HVA, the market comes in balanced, look for breakouts, we got them, market exploded. Then today, before we even broke down, I said the market's balanced. Now with the news, we're imbalanced. I'm even given the target for the day, 18 and a half, and we'll go back and look at it later on the session, 86 and a half. And then the low point would be 74. So you can use the roadmap as a guide to where your targets are. Now you don't have to have a, a wide trail like this. You can you can you can do a trail tighter. So if I wanted to come in here and do a trail tighter on my thousand tick runner on the 20, I can go like this, put this to 20 tight ATR. And I can have the ATR trail really tight all the way down. So now your ATR is tight. And I added an ATR to the zone breakout also. So this zone breakout that you're getting has an ATR built in also. Look at the air come out of this market. Now we're 33 and a quarter. We're up 10 points on the initial outer edge trade that I projected at 831 that happened at 846 or 845, 15 minutes later. There's a zone breakdown that happened now. Now there's another short opportunity here at 33 and a quarter, three quarters, and it got out low as 31. So now that's my zone breakdown that has the yellow trigger. So you can have the yellow trigger to fire for you over here on your 
zone breakdown, I mean your outer edge zone that I projected, or there's your breakdown, 33 quarters. But you know why this is working out so well? You know how you can cherry pick these trades and why this trade's working out so well? Because of one indicator that's worked for the past 39 years, market profile. I've never seen an indicator that has worked better than market profile for targets and for entries, ever. Not one. Because it's all the trading participants in the entire market. All the algorithms, all the hedge funds, all the prop firms, all the banks. This is not my opinion or your opinion. This is all the participants, all of them, everybody in the market. Every single share that's traded in the market is registered with market profile. It's not a stochastic. It's not divergence. This is the internal roadmap of the market. So when I said yesterday that we're inside of a balanced market, and I say look for an imbalanced market, then watch for the zone breakouts and the outer edge trades in the direction of the push. That's where it's at. Then today, as we come in on the live video, go back and play the video, the news broke the market down. So I said we're looking for an outer zone retracement. Now, get this. This is what's neat about it. You understand this should do very well. I said we're looking for an outer zone retracement here, right? And it happened. We got it. So back here, I said we're looking for an outer zone retracement right there for a short. Or a zone breakdown. We got them both today. They both worked out great. What I want you to understand is this. Not only do I want you to look for zone breakdowns with the direction of an imbalanced market for your high probability trades, I want you to look for your outer slingshots that are on top, and I talked to Sal about this yesterday to you, that's on top of market profile. So guess what was the retest here on market profile? The retest was either going to be the control point or LVA when you got to the outer edge pull-in. So when you pulled in at 48, Guess where the outer edge trade was? You know it. 48. Imagine that. Market profile does work. So what you're going to find, your best outer edge trades, and Sal, you and I talked about this extensively yesterday, you cannot only use your zone breaks to find out the critical breaking points like this in the market with market profile direction. That's a 33 and 3 quarters short, down to 27 a quarter potential so far. But you can find out the outer edge trades where this market should reverse. So there's 43 and a quarter. We're all the way down to 27 and a half potential. Sixteen points of potential. And we knew as traders by using this roadmap and by using my two setups that we only had two shots at this market after news came out. One outer edge trade, we knew right back here at 831. So we had a heads up from 831 all the way to 856. We had a half hour heads up on the zone breakdown. And we had a 15 minute heads up on the outer zone trade. Now, going into the market, I said what? If we break below low value area, see low value area is now shifting down. I said the target's going to be 18 and a half. And then the target for the day is going to be 86 and a quarter. Because we're in into an imbalanced market. There's no support, guys. There's no support at all. We're not using R1 or S1 or pivot levels or all that baloney. We're using the internal structure of the market, the roadmap of the market, which is market profile. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of indicators out there. The number one indicator I've ever seen over the past, since what, 1989, uh, 1985 is when they came out with it, uh, Pete Stoudemire, price profile, volume profile since 1994. But in my own personal experience since the early 90s, when I started trading these markets, I've never seen one indicator that beats market profile. Not one. So what we can do, though, is if we know that's the structure of the market, we can know going from balanced to imbalanced markets, then we can use 
entry techniques to try to get down to this target of 86 and a half instead of just blindly buying and selling a five minute market profile chart. Now, as you can tell, when we came in, I looked at market structure. I said news broke low value area. We went from a balanced and balanced market and we were sitting right here at 831. And so we have two setups and this is a setup you have to emulate. And it's happened like this all week. All week it's been like this. Right, Sal? I mean, you've seen it. It's happened like this all week, hasn't it? When it gets on top market profile, you either get a zone break or you get an outer edge slingshot. But if you don't match it up, then you have a lower probability trade. Meaning this, if I'm inside of a balanced market, do you think zone breakdowns are the best thing to look for momentum? No. If I get outside of, if I get an imbalance market and you want to turn that strategy on and you want to let the imbalance go for the zone breaks, those are the best times. Now, the outer edge works in both chop and zone. This one you pretty much can just let, I showed you the entire session a second ago. You can replay it. The zone breaks like to go in a in, in between profile, the outer edge. They'll work in a in a chop and a trend market. This indicator right here. It works in both. If I'm taking zone breakdowns, if you want to cherry pick zone breakdowns, go with market profile and know where your targets are. That's the hole in the market right there. We established right when news came out, that's our hole. And look, this market's still going down. Because we have a roadmap where the market's going. We're not trying to guess. We're not looking for a, a yesterday's price pivot or support one or support two or R1. They'll run right through those like butter. They will run right through those. S1, R1, R3. Yeah, just so many traders don't understand the, how the internals of the market work. You need to trade order flow. Order flow is market profile. Show me one indicator that can beat market profile, one. Show me one that gives you targets and where the market becomes balanced and imbalanced. There's not one that I know out there, not one. Look at this market still tanking. We knew this going into after the news came out. We knew we had two shots at it. We knew we had an outer edge retracement, and we knew we had a zone breakdown because we know in the history of market profile, it's worked for 39 years. 39 years. We know that all the market participants, they got caught holding the bag here at 44 and 3 quarters at counter trend traders. They tried to hold it up. So what happens is once you get through low value area and get into a, from a balanced and imbalanced market, all these sell stops keep hitting. And guess where they're going to try to bring it to? They're going to try to bring it all the way down to my previous day's market profile. They're going to try to gravitate just like they did yesterday, like we talked about, it was balanced and it got imbalanced and they brought it up to my previous day's market profile. Went right to them. Went right to them. There's my control point I had and there's my HVA. Went right to it and then there's a previous market profile that it closed at at the close. At the close, it closed right on my two-day profile, right on it. That was the closing price. So today, we're looking for 18.5. Now, see, price profile just popped up at 16.5. So that's another little magnet where we're going to try to get to. So this is a good zone, target zone for these trades. Okay. So if you use an ATR zone, on this last trade setup, that was a trade from 43 and a quarter down to 30 and three quarters on an outer zone trade as a 13 point trade. If using in, if you're using the 20, a thousand tick 20 zone on an outer edge trade. Okay, so that's what we need to try to do. We need to look and find 
two setups. You have a zone break, you have an outer edge slingshot. You stalk those trades. And then what you do, if you want to find the most critical point in the market, where the market is the most vulnerable to sell off, so you keep uh, uh, LVH keys adjusting down. So right now you have another outer edge trade here. So <clears throat> here's the next outer edge trade. You can see LVA keeps adjusting down. LVA was up here at 49 where my circles were. See adjusted. So market profile will automatically adjust for you. So at 39 and a half, guess what? Do you think 39 and a half would be a great place for an outer edge trade? Yes or no, guys? You think 39 and a half would be a great place for an outer edge trade? Hand me a why, yes or no? Why or in? Yes, why? Why is that a great place for an outer edge trade? Why is that a good spot? Yep, you got your Low value area sitting right there at, right on top of it, right there at 40. So your low low value area is sitting right there. So that's another spot right here to look for a low value area trade. Now, will this be a, another possible great um, short? Now, you should have a runner anyway from either here or here, guys. I mean, y your best possible chance of success is getting on this early, right? Your best chance of success is getting here on this first wave on the outer edge and this one right here. That's your best chance. But you're going to get a second shot at it. You're going to get a second shot at it here on an outer edge trade, and you're going to get a second shot at it here on a zone breakdown. You're still going to get another shot at it. But those are your two best shots after news. This is our projected short, projected short before they happen. So now that's our projected short there. And our projected short when it breaks this low here. So now we're stocking this, right? Now we're stocking this short and we're stocking this short because if the market's too weak, fine. That's okay because what's my target on market profile? Have I reached my target on profile yet? No. It can still go down to 18 three quarters. That's how you stock these trades, guys. Use profile in conjunction with this software. Whether you want a strategy trade like this, you have an opportunity to strategy trade it, or if you want to use it as an indicator. Either way, there's a right time to look for trade setups. And the right time to look for trade setups is when the market is imbalanced. If you're imbalanced like this yesterday, look at the move. If you're imbalanced like this today, look at the move. If you're imbalanced like the day before, here we go. Market was imbalanced here. Look where it broke. That's where we had some zone breakdowns. Remember those big zone breakdowns this week, Sal, in the afternoon? Right there. Had the big zone breakdowns here and here. Why? Because it's imbalanced. Huge runs. That, that's that run you and I were talking about. That's a 28-point run on the S&P. Why? The market got imbalanced. There's no support. None. So you want to trade imbalanced markets here, imbalanced markets here, imbalanced markets here. Then what we can do is we can use either the strategy to fire in on the retracements, on the zone breakdowns with an ATR trail, or we can use indicator based and use our chart trader here when it closes back inside and here. Totally up to you guys. It's totally up to the user how you want to do it. Gerald, go and shut that off. So I thought what I would do today is on these conference calls, <clears throat> I want to go over live price action with news. I thought it'd be kind of neat <clears throat> looking over how to utilize market profile and the software and the indicator all before it comes up live action.
I think that's a good way to do it for you guys to understand, to learn how to trade the system. Slingshot and a zone break. 